good afternoon all we are moving to fourth lecture series by dr shweta b sukreti i just introduce shweta's background she did her msc and phd in wood science and technology from forest research institute university dehradun and has focused research areas on preservative and fire retardant treatments value addition technologies of wood and bamboo composite boards she had published 14 research papers and experience in teaching field in the msc wood science and technology msc forestry in forest research institute dehradun and also served as a member of board of studies in msc wood science and technology forest research institute dehradun she also worked as a consultant in bamboo technical support group btsg north zone indian council of forest research institute forest research and education dehradun and she also a recipient of best poster paper award 19th commonwealth forestry conference held in dehradun during 2017 with this i invite dr shada for her lecture shada please good afternoon um yes uh, today i'm going to present upon the wood transformation from raw material to finished products and uh, i just want to start some brief because uh, yes wood is uh, different for every person like you are from a science student maybe from the biological maybe some people are from the biological background so for them there is a secondary xylem maybe for a artist it is that a uh, material where he can imagine his uh, creation and he can, he can convert his idea into execu execution level maybe for a common man it is a the raw material which is given by nature to convert it which is convertible in some usable product like furniture household items and others i uh, today through this lecture i am telling about that how a raw basic tree after felling it is wood and then how the wood is going to be a finished product what is the journey involved in this just see in this auditorium there are a lot of finished product just see this podium is from wood these beautiful chairs the table the tables there the wall paneling you can see and that's the roof also these all come from the wood and i'm very happy that i am talking about this thing what i can see in and around me so these are coming from wood but through different raw material not just a tree which is fell down you just chopped it or cut it down and then we are using so that is important about the wood how a product goes from a simple raw material simple tree to a final finishing product so to this lecture i will talk about the different type of raw material raw wood wood seasoning wood preservation composite wood manufacturing wood working and wood finishing i am starting with the raw wood what is wood wood is a basically a biological material i have this one sample you can see this sample this is a basically a wood we can see the nature given material a biological material i already told you that's a secondary xylem which is used for different structural purpose and non structural purpose also structural purpose like houses like bridges they are used timber structure building structure then furniture homes household items sports goods and many more and why we are using wood first thing it is very light as compared to the iron steel concrete anything but it has a good strength so we can say that high ratio of strength to weight second thing it is durable durable means that means its life span is much more 
we can see in a rural india that there are a lot of wooden structure which are long lasting from a 50 year 80 year maybe 100 year also then maybe you can visit some buildings so that means the wood is durable next thing is the availability of raw material in different size and shape you just imagine one pencil have you seen a pencil yes i have brought one this is a pencil it is wooden it comes from wood and just see the wall paneling here just imagine the size that means wood can give you a small pencil and you can get that much large shapes large sizes of product from the wood so this is a beauty of the wood that means the availability in different size and shapes easy working operation like if you want to carve something in iron it is very difficult but when i think about the carpentry items or our artist he can carve something with the help of the basic hand tools that means wood gives us a that place easy wood working operations and last that is the aesthetic value we as a customer as a consumer would appeals us it gives a good aesthetic look and we want to that means we want to fill our house with the wooden furniture and wooden items because it appeals that is the aesthetic value so this is about the basic about the wood now i am starting with the different type of wood simply i am saying because when a tree is fell down we think as a layman pup we just a layman imagine the wood is that the part which is a straight timber the straight bowl that mean i had to use the straight bowl what i am getting from a uh, that is tree suppose this is a tree and there are some branches i am imagining wood as a layman is imagining wood the part which is straight because it is easy to convert but what about the other part what about the branches twigs if the trees fall fell down if it is uprooted what about the roots can we use it or it is usable maybe there is a confusion some may are saying maybe the only the clear bowl which is not taper which is straight it is usable for a furniture product and other things maybe some are saying yes maybe we are we can use a branches and twigs and roots also but how as a wood science technician my role is to use to be to use wood in best use in best way there is a zero wastage that means the science and technology enables a wood enable a person to use a tree parts in a best way so that is a different raw material i am talking first is a log which i am talking the simple tree which is a straight bowl clear bowl and it is easy to convert in a different size of planks and we can use it what about the other raw material second is a veneer i am just showing you what is veneer if this is a log and this is a knife and you what you are doing you are just sharpening it the thing what you are will get it is a veneer basically this part this sheet we call veneer i am showing you example because i have a pencil but when we will do it with a log and we will turn a log opposite to the knife we will get a sheet just showing here this is a veneer and what is the role of this veneer this veneer is converting into plywood the plywood it is common i think so second raw material is a veneer that means if we can use the branches small branches we can get veneers from it and then convert into a plywood other raw material so laminates laminate that is the this is a log and i'm getting a slices from the wood not rolling it against the knife but i'm slicing it those slices are basically laminates and the laminates can be go can go through a alveol that will laminated veneer lumber the paneling in and around you this paneling is basically laminates the other material is a fiber maybe i have the only the branches twigs roots and i have to use it 
So I can get the fiber from it by defibrillation process. And then with the help of adhesive, resin or glue, we can say it. We can bind that material, the fiber, and we can convert it into a de medium density fiber boards or the other boards. So one raw material is a fiber. Next raw material is a strand excursor. This is basically the material which is left out during the sawing process. Or maybe some vinyl which is not, which are not usable for us. We can chip, we can make it a strand for it from there. And then strength can be converted into oriented strength boards. That means this is also raw material for us. Next raw material is a particles. Particles, that means if we are not getting nothing and we have that kind of small log, we have only that kind of tops and bottoms and anything. You just chop it in a different, different particle size, particles, and then blend it with the help of adhesive and make a board. This is a particle board. And you don't know what is inside of this podium. It is solid wood or particle board is inside it. So I will give some example. Next is the flakes and chips. Flakes and chips, the other raw material which can also be converted in a chip board. And also sawdust. There are a lot of wastes done during the saw milling operation when we are primarily converting a tree into a planks. So the sawdust also can be used, can be converted in some board, which may not use for the structural purpose, but may use for the non-structural purpose, maybe for the only partition purpose and or the other purpose where strength is not required. So this is about the different type of raw material. So how would science and technology involved in this? Science is about because we, this wood is a biological material. So science is basically the knowledge about the wood as a material, including its origin, its properties and characteristics. And what is technology? Technology is based, that means, is the application of those principles, those scientific knowledge in the conversion, in the processing and use of wood and wood-based material. This is the wood science and technology. And what happened when a uh, simple wood material goes into final product. First, it goes to a primary conversion. That means you just fell down a tree. It comes from a forest area to a saw milling operation. Then first we will do what we will convert into a different plank sizes so that it can easy to transport and other thing. The first primary conversion. Secondary thing, because tree has water in it and it if it has water inside it, it is not usable. It is not fit for, fit for the product manufacturing. So we have to do seasoning. Seasoning means the drying of wood in a controlled manner is a seasoning. Third thing, what we have to do, preservation. Preservation, that means because some wood may be durable, but maybe some wood which are not durable in nature. So through preservative treatment, we can improve its life. So that is a preservation. Next thing is a secondary conversion. That is a board manufacturing. That means after preservation, our wood, our plank is, that means treated, is seasoned. Now we have to go move for further product manufacturing. So we can go for secondary conversion. Just like a, just a tree, we have, we have to make this, uh, this lags, the arm raise, arm uh, supporters, the back, the tables component, or if you are not using the plank directly, we have to make the boards from those different raw material like vinyls, like particles, like flakes, strands, fibers, etc. And the last process are very important, the woodworking. When your board is ready, you have to convert in a product. There's a woodworking operation which plays very important role, which we generally say is a carpentry work and the finishing because without finishing it will not appeal you and your product will be your liability it will not go to a market and no customer will buy it so finishing is also an important post process so through this lecture i will explain the brief about these steps first i'm talking about the primary convergence sawing i'm just giving a brief about it because it is also important sometimes what we think this is a wood and we are saying we have to convert in a different in a plank. 
so really it matters that how we are converting it how we are getting plants in what kind of soil we are using in a general layman language what we do this is a plain showing i'm showing you he just put the log here and just chipped out it right this is a plain showing but there are other showing method which are very important which have some importance like the rift showing or we can say the radial showing where we can get this kind of sampling we cut in this matter the purpose is to reduce the warping warping is what sometimes if you just you can uh, see there's some uh, during the application wood is just that means if it this is wood i'm just showing you if this is wood you can get sometime it is board like this sometime it is like this sometime it is like this that means there are some seasoning defects is there so radial sawing is there is uh, done there where we want to avoid the any kind of seasoning defect or warping then there is other the tangential sawing and in tangential sawing the purpose is to to reduce the wastage to get maximum from it so that we can reduce the wastage in the the primary conversion and there's a quarter sawing quarter sawing is done when we want a some good structural integrity and want a smooth finishing so the primary conversion is also important step when we have purpose is to get a good product at the same time to reduce the wastage second part is wood seasoning basically wood has cell wall and cell cavities so water is inside the wood it is available in cell cavities and also in a cell wall bound water it is present there in a two form one is bound water and second is a free water free water is available in a cell cavity and bound water in a cell wall what happens during the application sometime when rainy season is there your door is stuck it is you are not able to close it what happens your product where you just get the best product from the market but you are saying that it is swelling now it is swelled it is happened because what happened a uh, wood is a biological material and it exchange moisture with environment with the atmospheric condition which depends upon the relative humidity of environment at the same time the temperature so in a rainy season when the moisture is available outside your wooden wood will take water from outside and it will swell so seasoning is done first to reduce the shrinkage and swelling which is a common issue during the wood application in a service when you are using it so the advantage next advantage when we season a wood season means we are removing the water from the wood and approximately 8 to 12% water is optimum water is the range basically which is suitable for wood to convert a product so when we reduce the moisture from a wood first thing it will reduce the biodegradation because if wood is moist there will be chance of the biological attack second thing it reduce the weight because the wet wood is heavy to transport so definitely it will increase your cost so after seasoning after drying the wood the transporting cost is also be reduced next is strength properties improved because dried wood is more stronger than the wet wood shrinkage and swelling is reduced preservative treatment is easy in a seasoned wood and we can apply glue when we want to make a bonded composite wood then finishes can be applied these are some advantages of the wood i have shown some uh, the i have told the seasoning defect also and these kind of cracks you can see these are the cracks which happens during the that means when wood is not controlled dried or seasoned properly then this kind of uh, drying defects may there so there are two type of seasoning method one is air seasoning or natural seasoning and second is clean seasoning we do in air seasoning that means we are drying the wood in natural condition we just plan a shed we kept our lot of wood in up just uh, in the shed and it is drying but it is controlled by the environmental environmental condition 
when there is a rainy season it is difficult to dry because there is temperature is very less and humidity at the same time when there is a summer season maybe your wood is very fast drying and then you are getting from drying defects because it is not a control condition so it can be used by a person depends on that where he has to use the product if the product is a that means high commercial value high economical value then the, we can avoid the air drying second thing is the kiln drying kiln drying that means that actually control condi condition there is a kiln we just put the uh, wood lot there we plan about the temperature we regulate the temperature the relative humidity at the same time air circulation to dry the wood and the purpose is to dry the wood in in the control way to get a quality wood because if it is not in control the defects may there we can reduce the cost of our product and there are some other example of the solar kiln also next is about the wood preservation i am starting with some photos which is definitely if i get some product from a market and it is just a delicious dish for a termite it is not good for me so there are example that how wood is degraded by the biological agents it may be fungus it may be mold it can, it may be borer it may be termite it may be some marine organism so there's a question why raw material needs to be treated first wood is a organic material which has cellulose hemicellulose and lignin and these are provide these component are providing food for organism when uh, there is a living tree it has some resistance against the biodegrading agencies but when it is fell down it lose its resistance so there is a need of preservation so what is natural durability natural durability is a natural resistance of hard wood of wood to decay insect marine borer because sap wood is already a non durable in nature because it contains sap which is a main food of the organism so these are the different type of biodegradation there may be chance of bacterial attack when a bacterial attack happens when wood is completely submerged in a water into water there may be chance of bacterial attack then the fungal attack is there mold and stain and rot may be there the insect attack borer and termite attack may be there i don't know what uh, termite is there issue or not but termite is generally a big problem for a wood borer there are some pin hole borer you can see sometimes there are some plants which has a small small pin hole borer pin holes that means you are not able to find out the insect but insect is is already inside it sometimes there are some product when we which are giving always every day some powder this is a basically powder force bitter lictus africana that means you are there some may be some bad i'm giving example and you are sweeping every day of some powder and you are getting where where from where it is coming down it is coming from your bed because already there is some pins and there is some borer the powder powder borer which are converting the cellulose hemicellulose the food available in wood into a powder and giving it to you so these are some bad degradation and the treatment methods what we can use there are some non pressure treatment and pressure treatment non pressure treatment is basically when we are treating a wood or at only surface level our purpose is only to protect the surface of the wood so there may be different treatment like prophylactic treatment that means only surface treatment which can be done by brushing or spraying the preservative there diffusion process diffusion process means basically we just take the wood and then cap it inside the preservative we take a vessel and preservative materials chemical is ready and then we are dipping our material into a preservative material this is a by diffusion process some preservative may get inside the wood which may protect it next is hot and cold process in a hot and cold process some uh, the preservative vessel is there the preservative is inside it the wood is inside it first we raise the temperature it is basically hot and after that because when uh, the temperature is rise the journey it is a uh, uh, re the reason is that to get the maximum air from the wood so that the 
the place can be generated to get the preservative. Next is a sap displacement method. And there are butchery process, which is generally used for the preservative treatment of green bamboo. And the other pressure treatment method, when we are using wood in those applications where there's a chances of favorable condition for the biological attack or the exterior purpose, we always prefer for the pressure treatment. Pressure treatment, there are two types of treatment. One is full cell treatment and one is empty cell treatment. Full cell treatment, when we want, the objective is to get maximum retention of preservative. That means we want the chemicals should go in a maximum quantity in wood. And empty cell process, when the purpose is to get the maximum, maximum penetration. The purpose is not to get the maximum chemical inside it. But purpose is that means the chemical should go inside the wood. So these are some uh, treatment methods. There's some uh, photograph of spraying, brushing, then dipping, this is sap displacement method, butchery process, which is used for the bamboo and the pressure treatment. Now I'm moving to a question, does every wood need treatment? Because uh, nowadays we are using preservative treatment very frequently, but in older days, there are very less we use a preservative or we are using preservative. It is that made a traditional method. Sometimes always preservative we use to preserve our wood. What happens because earlier we had the plenty of raw material is there in our forest. Now forest is degrading and we are not able to get the material from the raw, the natural forest. So we are getting material from the plantation timber or from the import. The import sector has its own limitation. So that means we generally depending on the plantation timber and plantation timber are the salt rotation timber, which sometimes has, which are generally in non-durable in nature. So those timber needs to be treated. So I have already about the natural durability, natural durability is inherent properties. Some wood has the natural durability cause of the extractive present in it. What is extractive? It may be some chemical. This is a wood. I'm showing it. This is a part. This is a this dark part is a hardwood, and this part is a sapwood. This is a dark because the chemicals are present in it. That's why the color is this dark. So in a hardwood, there's a presence of some extractive, some chemical tannins, the flavonoids, which are giving the resistance to the wood against the biodegrading agents. So uh, um, apart from the extractive, there may be other reason. There's some mechanical barrier, like there may be tylosis, aspirated peats, gums, resin blocks, which have to stop the attack of wood, but that means the penetration of any bore or insect. There may be desiccation, maybe the other uh, example, which can give the resistance to or durability to the any wood product. Desiccation is due to the death of cells and it, Due to desiccation, the, there's a less moisture, and we, because moisture is not there, so there's a less chance of the attack by the biodegrading agencies. And if we remove the nutrients, that means we remove the food, the, there will be less chance of the attack. So the classification is done on the basis of durability. There are three classification, three classes. First class is that means when your wood has the durable, that means life more than ten years. This is a class one during class one timbers and these timbers generally not need to the not need to be treated. Second class is moderately durable, which has a lifespan from five to 10 years. And the third class, which has a life less than the five years. So we can decide on the basis that in this category that our wood is durable or naturally durable or not durable. If it is not durable, we have to go for the, some preservative treatment. So now I'm coming to a composite product. I, we, our wood is now seasoned. It is now treated, planks are treated. Now we have to go for a secondary conversion. That means we have to make a part, the component of the furniture or that product, what we are going to be a uh, plan. Or we have to plan for the board manufacturing, the raw material I have already to told. So there's two type of uh, composite. One is veneer product. And second is non veneer product. Veneer product, that means which are coming from the veneer. First is plywood. How it is made, I'm just giving you one example. This some maybe just a veneer. That means 
I just sharp the pencil and get out the skin of this. This is a veneer maybe. And these are the grain patterns. Can you see this? These are the grain patterns. When the grain patterns are, you are using adhesive and the grain patterns are in perpendicular way. I will see. This is a plywood. When that means you are binding veneers in direction to the perpendicular with the help of adhesive. This is a plywood. And when the all grain direction in a same way, that will parallel direction. This is your laminates. This is the only difference between the plywood and the laminated wood. Second is the non-veneer product. That's the fiber wood, which come from the fibers. With the help of adhesive, we made it. Second is hardboard. Hardboard is a very common craft. That means part of our craft during our school days. Next is a particle board. That means the board which is made by the particle with the help of adhesive. Adhesive is used in the composite wood. Next, the oriented strand board. This is an example of oriented strand board that you get getting strands. That means no size is there. You just blend it with a raisin, press it in a hot press, and then make a product. These are some cross laminated timber and glue laminated timber. Cross laminated, that means when laminates are in a then we cross direction and glue laminated when the all laminated boards are in a parallel direction. These cross laminated timber and glue laminated timber are generally used for the structural purpose. I'm talking about now the, how the plywood is manufactured. I have given you a brief that how it is manufactured. It comes from forest then to log yard. The debarking is there, bark is removed, then it cuts into blocks. Then it goes to a that means peeling process that means against the knife, the peeling is there, then clipping. That means the, the sizing of the veneer, what the required size as per the product. The veneer drying is there. Adhesive is applied on it. Then cold pressing, cold pressing. That means we just pressing it and just keeping it left over. The, that means in a room or the room temperature. Then after some hours, we can go for that hot pressing, the sanding, trimming, and grading. So these are the basic uh, plywood. I just uh, want to show you one video it will allow me the how plywood is manufactured. It's a, it's a basic animation, what I want to show here. Maybe it will help you to understand more and more about the plywood manufacturing. This is a veneer. We are getting veneer. There's different size of veneer. Then drying process of veneer because it can have some moisture, which may get which may prop uh, problem in a adhesive application. There's a gluing of veneer. We have to apply adhesive or resin. Then we have to press it in a hot press. The belt sender. 
and the product is ready to dispatch. So uh, next is the particle board manufacturing. The difference is only the raw material is particle here. The same you have to go, that means you have to get first particle, then particle needs to be dried first, then it has to again, uh, there's some mat formation. That means you have to, you have to fill the particle inside the mat. There may be two laminate, two veneer. Inside the veneers, you have to fill the particles. Then again, hot pressing it and the product is the particle board is ready. I'm just showing this photo because sometimes there, this is laminates basically. In upper side, there's a laminate and inside it is a particle board. And there are a lot of product which are, which, which are used by generally in household items in our houses, in, in and around us. And we don't know what, what it, it is exactly. It may be sometimes maybe particle board. Now, uh, next one was the fiber board, medium density fiber board. It is a whitish color. It is whitish because it is, you get a fiber after the defibration process. So we have to get, that means we have to separate the fiber. When fiber is there, the fiber drying is there, then fiber will be blended with the adhesive, then pressed because lignin is already removed during the defibration process. So the brown color is not there. So this is the fiber board. Now, after when your board is ready, then you have to plan a product. There are six woodworking operation. That's a part of the carpentry work. One is planing. Planing it, that means because your product, your plank may, your board has some uneven surface. So you have to plane it first so that it can be suitable for the product. Second, sanding, sanding to get the smooth surface, then shaping it, the turning it, turning. That means we turn a wood against a knife, against a cutter, and then we give it a different shape with the help of some hand tools or machine tools. Boring operation is there because there are some wood product where the need of nailing and screwing is there. So first we have to do drilling or boring and then mortising and tanning, that means a jointry. These are the six woodworking operation, which is important part of any wood product. Now, last is that why to finish wood surface. This is the one photo, just see this is the same photo. One is this surface and second is after finishing the glossy surface is there. And I, I know that which is more appealing, is a glossy surface is more appealing. So. When the, there's some unfinished wood is there, surface is there, first the color changes may be there cause of the weathering and uh, the environmental condition, photo degradation may be there. So it generally, erosion is fast. At the same time, it accumulates some dust. Next, so we have to do the finishing. To finish it, just not to increase the aesthetic value of it, but to protect it at the same time, to provide a cleanable surface and dimension stability. That means to stop the exchange of the moisture with the environment. So finishes may be paint, polishes, stains. There are two types of classification of finishes. You generally, I'm talking about the, what is available in the market, the general finishes. One is based on the film forming. There are some finisher which are penetrating in nature. That means some oil-based finishers. When we applied it, it is not in, on the surface, it just get inside the wood and it gives the finishing look to the wood. It may be oils, some linseed oil or tongue oil. There may be some film forming finishes which make a film uh, above the wood surface and then giving a desired thickness like a primer. Primer is a general, that means we use, but what happens in primer, it just hide the wood natural grain. Next, food finishes based on the curing. There are two types of finishes. One is evaporating finishes. Evaporating finishes, that means we just dissolve some colored pigment in a, some solvent. When we're applying it, there's, after applying the finishes, maybe some solvent may evaporate. That's the evaporating finishes. And there's some solvent which may react with the wood, wood component, and it is getting a chemical reaction and getting the pigs into it. So there are two classifications based on the evaporated finishes. Evaporated finishes may be lacquer, shellac, and water-based. And reacting finishes may be linseed oil or tongue oil. 
so this is all about a, a brief about that how a simple raw material goes to a final product 